here's an amazing thing that happened to me like immediately after when i'm in that process of you know what i don't want anything i don't want to reach out to anyone i just i just want a moment for myself then something turns out people actually see and say and reach out to me as a mentor like there's a t- there's a there's a crown that that i actually got a heart let me call it a heart mm-hmm. there's a heart that i got out of it i never i never saw myself as that and i felt oh now people want you to mentor to them. mentor them ah, okay okay and not only individual people reaching out to me uh institutions organizations people just reaching out to me can you come talk to our girls can you come talk to our youths mm. can you mentor our young people we have a mentorship program would you like to be part of it as a mentor yeah i'm like what i never saw myself as that <laughs> i'm like what Okay, so somebody actually saw that the whole process or everything that I actually been through is worth um is worth me trying is worth me sharing something into their lives. Mm. And that's how the other heart now came in and yeah. I was like, okay, I feel I feel this is an opportunity that I should actually take because it now drives me from just being that 19 year old fashion designer that people saw on TV and so went through the whole process perceived a timid young girl it grows me out of it yeah because that's not valentine and that's that's not valentine and people did not know that <laughs> mm. people did not know that i had i had had leadership capacities from a young age moving all through the academic institutions i had i got leadership capacities that proved yeah. that would actually be able to prove that i'm not just a timid girl that someone saw on screen mm. there's so much more that amounted to me and i felt at some point it was at a disadvantage how the whole show portrayed me yeah. it portrayed me as a timid as a timid girl which i'm not <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys? My name is Sebastian and I just want to officially welcome you to the Kenyan Entrepreneur, your number one channel on matters entrepreneurship and lifestyle. Today is another amazing day. We have an amazing guest for a new for a segment Young Entrepreneurs. Her name is Valentine. She is an entrepreneur. Some of you might remember her from Safaricom's BYOB, Blaze BYOB. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. <laughs> but uh to make sure that you're not getting anything wrong, please introduce yourself. <laughs> So my name is Valentine Nekesa Nginya just as you've said my name is Valentine I am an entrepreneur young entrepreneur on the basis of how long I've been in business and as well as my age as a human being <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah and yeah so yes as you have said again I bet some people might recognize me from Blaze Be Your Own Boss TV show that's the platform that actually gave me the push or catapulted me into being the person that I am today. So yes, that's Valentine. Just 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 to I'm I'm very curious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because when people get into the limelight and mm. their brand become known because of this reality TV shows, mm. people tend to have a disconnect between them and the real person <laughs> behind <laughs> it because just as with other celebrities, other musicians, other actors or whoever it is that we see on TV, mm. we do not necessarily consider them as human beings quote and quote <laughs> yeah <laughs> so for us i think the one thing that i would like us for do to, to do today mm. is to know who valentine is where did you come from where did you go to school yeah what makes you happy what makes you smile <laughs> yeah so yeah uh to start it off though you've just said when we see someone on tv there's you know an angel superhero something something and we think about them but we need to also remember that yeah it's true they are cause it is we are humans just as the person who's viewing cause there's a time also that person is viewing someone else on screen so i am human i, <laughs> I am fully human i do have things that excite me i have things that put me down and yeah basically i'm just as the person who's watching me on screen i'm not all that that you will uh tend to perceive the way it, it's just it's human nature i believe we have this perception that we will look at someone and you know th- put them on a certain high table or something yeah. 
But yeah, I so I am human. I did go to school like everybody else. <laughs> hopefully, take us back. Take us back. Where where was Valentine born? Who are the parents? Do you oh, have yes. any siblings? Yes, yes. Uh, which part of the country <laughs> you are from? Because I, I I'm a strong believer of whoever we are or wherever we are, we are first where we came from. Very true. Yeah. So if you can give us that background, it's very, very, very true. So I'm an only child. Uh, I was an only child of my mom. My mom passed. She passed away in 2009, when I was in standard standard six. I was born in. I was born and raised in Mombasa. <laughs> Many people do not know this. I was raised in Coast. What happened to the accent? Anyway, anyway, <laughs> the accent course. is there, Jermaine. <laughs> okay. It comes. It comes sometimes. Good. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I was raised by a single mom in Mombasa, and it was an exciting experience. And initially, there's a time of my life that I actually spent in Lokichogyo before I started school. My mom was a sort of tourist of this country let's just put it like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah there's a time i spent in lokichogi while she was working there and then and then when i started schooling we, we relocated back to mombasa and i spent most of my childhood there i can basically say who i am today or how i am grounded or who the person that i turned out to be came from all that grounding that i got in mombasa and i was raised by a very strict mom People say African moms are strict. My mom was strict. I, 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 I'm yet to meet. <laughs> I'm yet to meet her version. Yeah. But yeah, I was raised by a very strict mom, which I thank God for because it made me the person that I am today. The values that I uphold. Uh, the, the let's just say the lady or the woman that I am today. Is well, a reflection of of, her, my, of my mom yeah. exactly. And then when she passed away, I had to because it was. I was raised by a single mom, as I said. I had to move with my relatives who, apparently most of them stay in Kakamega. So there was that transition from a city or an <laughs> uptown to a, <laughs> to a village, literally a village in Kakamega. Yeah. So yeah, then relocating there. I can't say that that was an easy transition for me. As I've said, I am human. I do have things that put me down. I have things that... Uh, excite me and it wasn't a really good transition in my life at some point i usually say for the people that i've shared this experience with at some point i i blacked out or is it really blacked out i i tuned out from reality at some point during that transition it was it was massive for me and i had to go here's the scary bit i had to go back to school the following week after just burying my mom it was it wasn't a, it wasn't a, I wasn't in a good place. Let yeah. me just say that. And being a young girl, you can't express your emotions or you feel no one will understand mm. when you're expressing yourself. So it was, it was a battle that I fought individually. And years later is when <laughs> I actually got out of it. it. Took me years to get out of it. So I transitioned there, then moved to Kakamega. Then I relocated from one relative to the other because they were trying to figure out who's more capable of adding me onto their family. You know, someone has to consider their finances. Are they able to feed you? Are they able to take you to school? Yeah. You know, are they able to just, in general, take care of your upkeep? Yeah. The whole process. So I moved with one relative, then I moved to the next relative. And then during that transition, I actually made a deliberate decision to skip us, <laughs> to skip a class. Okay. So I, I, I was trying to blend in or balance with the children that were there. And the one that I felt I balanced with was in a class ahead of me. So, ah. so I was coming from <laughs> class six. Then I went to class eight. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and okay. here is the miracle. I I I usually say that was a miracle because I moved. I I skipped. I moved to the next class, and I did brilliant. I did brilliantly, amazing to the point that no one ever realized that. I never you went to the pre. Class, no yeah. one ever noticed that. Which I thank God for. It was because I don't know how it all happened. To be honest, it was. <laughs> I, th I think you need to give yourself some credit. It's very hard for people. There's a there's an interview I saw. I think Snoop Dogg was accepting an award, and mm. he was like, "I want to thank myself." <laughs> that, yeah, I've seen <laughs> it. <laughs> so I think you should also give yourself the props. I thank because, myself. Yeah, <laughs> skipping a class and then being able to perform well yeah. is a feat in itself. It is. So after class eight, where did you head? To? So I went to high school. I got in. I co I got called onto a national school. 
I went to my girls and do it. Yeah. And yeah, and I think that was another turnover for my life again. You know, I went and met new people and then I was still not let's just say I was still not in a stable state of mind after everything that had happened and and I think people should if I if if I'm to put this out there sometimes take take some time with a child and try and talk to them just try and ask them how are you doing yeah. how, how are you feeling because they carried a smile around I I carried a smile around I it's not like I blocked anyone out but I wasn't okay yeah so I I wish someone talked to me at that time maybe things would have been better or of some sort but I believe everything happens for a reason because yeah. every journey that we get onto actually defines the kind of people that we turn out to be at the end of the day. So yeah, at the end of the day, I thank God for all the transition that I went through to be who I am today. So getting onto that school and I say, I don't know if all schools are like this, but that was the most amazing school that I had ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. There was a family. Yeah. I, I felt, it's so sad that I felt more at home at school. at school than yeah. at home. I think it happens more than people want to admit. Yeah. Because like you said, conversations in mostly yes. in the African settings mm. are not things that happen on the regular. They don't. So your dad is going to show up when he's giving instructions. <laughs> your mom is going to show up when she wants you to do something. Yeah. But they never really ask you, like you said, are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. And yeah. then also, I think that plays into the part of mental health later on. True. But we're going to get to that. <laughs> if at all it's a conversation you want to have. Okay. So now after Eldoret, you said Eldoret girls. Moy girls Eldoret. Moy girls Eldoret. Yes. Uh, what happened after that? So after Moy girls Eldoret, I... Of course, we, I sat for my KCSE, and then it was now time to move to university. Yeah. You know, you're moving on to the next level. So I I went to a private university, Mount Kenya. I went to Mount Kenya University and studied bachelor's in information technology. <laughs> BBIT. BBIT. Why did I study BBIT? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of someone who has... An engineering degree, but is doing YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, I don't know. I, I, I just think I was still in a transition state. And I don't know it was because people were doing it at that time. I, I, I really... <laughs> you have, is it something you've have, ever practiced? Even in apprenticeship or whatever? Never. I've actually never done anything about it. Like, yeah. I've never... But here's the crazy thing. I... When I got on to when I got on on to university and uh, I was getting through it, I enjoyed I enjoyed my classes. I enjoyed I enjoyed doing the practicals. I enjoyed the whole process of studying information technology. But <laughs> it's a very big battle. Right? <laughs> I do not know. Uh, I, I I can never answer why. You know, somebody somebody will actually say, ah, the reason why I went to study medicine was, you know, I don't know, I had this this story, there's someone I felt I needed to care for, and I felt being a doctor is the best way now to solve this problem. Yeah, <laughs> like people have a backstory. Exactly. But I, I don't know. I and think then, also, yeah, sorry to cut it's you. Okay. Um, during that period, okay, I don't know what period this was, but <laughs> obviously it's still happening, mm. even during our time. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I just said, I've just made myself <laughs> sound so old. <laughs> we used to do these courses because index one and index two are fine. You know, You've said it. And then that general uh, perception of medicine, mm. um, being a lawyer or being a doctor, whatever it is. Yes. That was the in thing. Yes. And then now you in that class and there's nothing you can do about it mm. except pass. And it comes easy to you because you're smart. Yeah. But it's not necessarily something that you're that passionate you about. Exactly. Yeah. So from now this BBIT <laughs> <laughs> class you've graduated, how did you end up on Blaze? So here's the thing. During my university and not even university, it starts back to it goes back to high school. Yeah. My high school was good enough to be a kind of school that pushes talents. So we had this pageant things that happened yeah. in school, Miss Miss Moiji. Mm. So then I had friends who used to participate in pageants. And then, you know, I had, let's just say I had a creative touch. I, I was that friend who would help you create that amazing outfit that would make you take the crown home. Yeah. So it's starting from there, then friends just being like, you should do something about this. You should do something about this. 
So getting, I never did anything about it. So getting on to university, then the same thing. It's it's still there. Not pageants only in, in, in my university, but universities around, they do pageants. They are trying to get a miss for their universities. Yeah. So it comes a day that they're doing a miss something and then someone mm. just comes and asks me, <laughs> you know, you actually dress in an interesting and pretty way. Yeah. Can you, who, who, where did you get the outfit? And I'm like, oh, I just picked pieces and I put them together. Put them together. Yeah. Then someone is like, what? That's nice. Can you do something for me as well? You know, yeah. you look so, you always look so nice. And then you end up being the stylist. At this time, are you doing it for business or you just like it? Are you charging no, I, people for these services? Or? When I started, no, I wasn't charging. Yeah. It was just, ah. Uh, it's in a win, I, like. uh, I just like doing it one, exactly. Yeah. It was just for ah, I did that for her. So yeah. then, when it turned out, when the first person I did that for her referred me, and then people were like, What? How much? Oh, then I was ah. like, Oh, okay, <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> so then, now it, you know, now it start, it kicks your mind. You're like, You know what? Yeah. I should actually be charging for this. So then, you charge the first person that you've done an outfit for. Then it turns out. So then it turns out a friend, a friend of mine tells me, you know, you're actually pretty. You should be the one competing for this, and then you can make your own. Out- you know, it's a win-win situation. Yeah. So then I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can. Yeah. So this one time, then I decide, let me try for my university. So I go ahead and I try. Yeah. And here's the crazy thing. I tried it the first time ever. I had never done it and actually won. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, then then I'm just there. I'm like, you know what? This is something that I can actually do. Mm-hmm. Then it, I, I continue picking up. But the funny thing is I already had the habit. I used to have this habit of I go to a tailor and I ask for the leftover pieces that they have. Yes. Yeah. They don't even charge me. Mm-hmm. You know what? And then you've created this friendship with them. This there's just an interest I had when it came to fabrics. Yeah. So you, you've bonded with the tailor. There's those leftovers. It got to a point that the tailor now tells me, Oh, there's actually I put you as <laughs> yeah? yeah. Zguapa Kando. Yeah. Exactly. So putting pieces together, then it hits me. This is something that I can actually do. Then I take it serious. So I do a piece for my relative at home. Yeah. And then she goes out to her chamas and then the mamas of the chamas turn yeah, out to be tunataka tunataka yo tunataka kama yo then i'm like oh okay tunaza <laughs> shona so then we now start looking for how much would i actually charge for this you know even getting to that point of i got this for free uh i don't know how much i'm threading for i don't know how much um paying for the machine would actually cost, you know, yeah. being able to just put the cost together, then I start to think with the need basis, you know what, I might actually be needing a pair of shoe mm. or, <laughs> you know, there's just personal needs as a lady that I need. I'm like, how much will this be? Okay. So according to the need that I need, I have at that ah. time, I price it like that. So, so like if I can sell, my need is 50,000. Exactly. I need to sell... 50,000 clothes at one bob and I'm okay. Exactly. So you're not really thinking about the profit margin no, no, and the expense. I'm yeah. like, because I'm, I'm not running a business at that time. Yeah. It's just an interest that I have or I'm passionate about this thing. So I'm just moving with it for it to just be, and I'm, it turns out like it can actually cater for my personal needs. Mm. That's how I'm going. And here, here's the thing. There's no money that I'm actually putting at, oh, this is a business or something. <laughs> this is money for oh, me. Oh, you're making it and you're using it. Exactly. What? So, so that's how it started. Then as time goes by, then as young people, still in university, as young people, we are hanging out because you've asked about how it turns out to get onto Blaze. Yeah. So as young people, then we're just hanging out and things. Then we hear, oh, Blaze is doing something. So I'm in Kakamega. Mm-hmm. Blaze is doing something in Kisumu. Yeah. And then I'm like, Kisumu, how do we get to Kisumu? It's actually a two-hour drive on a mm-hmm. mat. Two-hour drive from Kach to Kisumu. So we're trying to figure out, and it's 200, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're there thinking about your pockets. How yeah. am I to get there? Then do you know what Blaze does? Blaze decides it's going to cater for your transport. It's bringing buses from Kisumu to carry us, ferry us all the way to Kisumu. All you need to do is pay. I think we paid 50, Bob. What? Which we ended... No, it was a hundred bob, which we were refunded back when we got to the entrance. We were given a hundred bob worth of airtime. Oh yeah. 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 So we like we went. I went there actually for excitement. There was everyone is. There going. was artists who were coming, and then everyone is going. It was just a fun thing that we were doing as young people. Yeah. 
I keep saying crazy things kept happening. So cra- here's the crazy <laughs> thing. Okay. So we get at the entrance and then there's this lady who's checking us in. I'm with a friend of mine. Then this lady says, you guys go there. Do you know where she's directing us? Mm-hmm. At the audition tent. Whoa. F- from the blues. You guys were going to see artists. Exactly. Have fun as friends. Have, we did, actually, we didn't even know there was something like there's an audition mm-hmm. that was happening with Blaze. We, all we knew, Blaze was all about bringing artists to entertain us. Yeah. That's what we thought it was about. So I'm getting there, then this lady is directing me to a smaller tent because the major tent is on the other side. She's telling us, you guys go there. Yeah. What do you mean go there? But then I'm like, you know what? Let's just go. Mm-hmm. So we go. We get. We're almost nearing there. There's another lady who is hosting on that side. So that lady then says, "What did she ask me? Um, is it a? Oh, she said, is it a business or a passion? There, yeah, she said, is it a business or a passion? And then I just said, it's a business. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I'm answering. Yeah. So I said, it's a business. Then this friend of mine is. She's like. You, you respond to these things. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So this lady says, okay, come in. So we get into the tent. Then the lady says, here's some forms. Please fill for me. Yeah. So I look at the form. The form is talking about uh, auditioning for Be Your Own Boss TV show. I'm like, What is this? So I go through the form. They're asking me, um, uh, how long have you been doing the business? Mm. <laughs> what sort of business is it? You know, what drives you into doing that business? Then it hits me. There's something I've actually been doing. I've mm. been doing something to do with fashion. Yeah. I'm a fashion designer. <laughs> there I went, filled the form, fashion designer. I'm passionate about this. You know, I was actually passionate about it. Yeah. So I'm filling the form from my heart. Then I give her back the form. Then she tells she she takes the form. She tells wait wait a minute. Takes the form, gives to another lady who's seated there. And then five minutes later, this lady tells me the producer wants to see you. I'm like, what, what, what did <laughs> what, I do? What's happening? Yeah. So I'm there. I'm like, oh my God, the producer wants to see me. So I go. Then this. <laughs> so I remember sitting before the producer. He's sat outside. There's another tent beside him. So yeah. he sat outside the tent. And then there's a chair there. He pulls a chair for me and tells me, wow, Valentine, how old are you again? And then I'm like, uh, 19 then he says this is brilliant you th- you are thinking like this i'm like did you get the right form <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know how these things are happening i don't know and then the thing is i found there were so many people who were already at the tent yeah before i got there yeah. and then i'm just and then things are just moving so fast for me to even I, I'm trying to catch my. Uh, I'm like, what happening? is happening? So then the producer tells me, I really love what you've written here. I really, this is what you've been doing at your age. You're thinking like this. This is your thought process. Just seems amazing. I'm like, oh, I'm actually brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> what? Then he says, you know what? I want you to meet the judges. I'm like, what guys? I just came to see the artist. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. So. Okay, I'm like, okay, then he tells me, give me 10 minutes. Just sit on the, sit at the tent, give me 10 minutes. Yeah. I'm like, okay, sure. So I go back and tell my friend, what? I don't know what's happening here, but I think we're making money. <laughs> <laughs> There's money that is There's coming. There's money in. that is coming. Yeah. Then he, he tells me, so, so what hit my mind was, it's a competition that's happening here. Mm. You know, the way people do activations and then there's a competition somewhere. Mm-hmm. So that's what hit my mind. I'm like, there's a competition. And this is this seems like it's going well. <laughs> <laughs> we might go home with some rats. You know? Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so it happens. So I get in there and then I'm, well, I'm getting in to see the judges. Then crazy thing, crazy thing happens again. Mm. Bob Colimo walks in and he says, I want to sit in for this one. What? <laughs> so here you are you've gone to watch artists perform yeah someone has directed you to a nomination <laughs> form you filled a form you found yourself in a tent in front of a producer and then now one of the biggest ceos in the country I'm wants like, to watch i know bob who doesn't yeah. know who didn't know bob so i'm like what then he walks in he actually didn't sit he stood there were three judges there then he stood at the side then the other judges were just like, hello, hi, welcome, hi, welcome. And then there's one judge that, judge that I remember, Wangeshi, the artist. Mm. 
Wangeshi did <laughs> Wangeshi didn't ask me nothing, didn't say anything. All she did was she shared a cape on. She took off her cape and she told me, sell this to me. I'm like, guys, I don't even know what's happening right now. <laughs> what's what's <laughs> going on here? Yeah. So she gives me her cap and then I take it. And then she and then I I remember I, I sold it to her. Because I remember the rest smiled mm. and then she was just like sold. What? And then I gave her cape back. And then I had one I had won an a top that I made myself. Mm. And then one judge asked me, You did that? And I was like, Yes. And he was just like, Good job. I didn't end it. So yeah. I was like, Where's my money? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, uh, someone has to pay someone me. Someone has to pay me. Yeah. But then, so I left, then rejoined my friends back to the entertainment tent, and life moved on. So we went back home. Mo- like, life just moved on. Yeah. Then from the blues, months later, I get this call. I'm looking, who's this? Who's trying to call me? Mm-hmm. But you know, you know those numbers that you're looking at, you're like, eh, it be a shara. Yeah. So then I received, then a lady on the other end goes, Hello, hi. Am I speaking to Valentine Nekasa? I'm like, yes. Uh, I'm calling you from the Be Your Own Boss TV show auditions. You've been nominated to be one of our contestants. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. I was by the roadside at a friend's stall. She had a kakibanda where yeah. she sells uh, clothes, um, recyclable clothes and shoes. Mm. Reusable clothes and shoes. Yeah. And we were there seated. It was just a normal day for us. She usually used to carry a flask of Uji, which was, which was amazing for me. Because mm. food is this guaranteed. Is, these, are <laughs> these are mitumbas. Now. Yes. Okay. So we've just sat there. It's a normal day for us. And then I'm getting this call. I'm like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 I've <a> changed tactics. <laughs> <laughs> then she's like, See, this is Valentine Nikesa. I'm like, yes, it's her. What what do you mean? Are you serious? Then the lady says, yes, I'm... I screamed by the road. Yeah. I was like, what? And he, the funny thing is this. I was at a point where that semester I had not gone to school because I had not cleared... Funny thing, I had not cleared my previous semester's uh, school fees. Yeah. So even during my exams, I went... I went and appealed to our accounts, uh, our the school accountant. I yeah. ap- I pleaded with him to let me do the exams. And my what are they called? Uh, my hmm? Hmm? the person who was in charge of the degree that I was taking. Yeah. He's called Mr. Mumia. I even remember Mr. Mumia. <laughs> okay. Mr. Mumia decided, uh, I, I went and told Mr. Mumia, I'm unable to clear these fees. Can you help me? Then he told me, just go talk to the account, to the accountant, tell him I sent you. And I went and spoke to him and he told me, oh, okay. He called, so he called Mumia and then Mumia was like, yeah, let her through. Then they let me through yeah. to do the exams because there was no way I was going to do it. So that semester, the previous semester clearing it to do the exams, I still had fees, yeah, arrears. Yeah. yeah. So going to the next semester, they refused to, you had to have a pass mm-hmm. to get through to the facility. Yeah. So I didn't have a pass to get through because. Ah, yes, the mitumba <laughs> <laughs> so to go, 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 mitumba. So yeah. the thing, I had not gone to school that semester and I was just, I was in a state where I'm like, I, I used to think there was so much that I was going to turn out to be. There was, there was a person that I used to see myself as. Yeah. There's just a, I, I, I knew I was going to amount to be a great woman. Yeah. And here I was, barely, can, can barely finish school. What's going to happen to my life? What, what's going to happen to my dreams? Who, what, what's really going to happen to me? Mm. Who, what kind of a person am I going to be? I'm just, am I just going to be just one of those statistics that happen, those people who dropped out of school? I didn't want to be part of the statistics. I wanted to be the person who stands out because I, I believed that I had the capacity and I knew I could be that person. Yeah. But here I was, none of that was happening at the moment. And then this lady is telling me that I'm selected for a TV, yeah, a TV show. show. What do you mean? <laughs> I screamed, I cried, and then I, my friend, I remember my friend telling me, is that person even serious? Are you serious? Is it really true? 
then I was like, we'll, we'll see. With time, we'll see. So they've said, they actually told me they'll email me. Yeah. So I was like, and at that point, I was like, someone who emails you, that's serious stuff. It's no jokes. Plus, you can check the domain if exactly. it's legit. Yeah. So, yeah. Then the following day, I get an email. I'm like, what? What? Then they tell me, uh, we need you to do some, there was some medical checkup that we needed to do you know, to just make sure you're in a proper physical health mm. state. And then, yeah, they catered for everything. So when the whole process started happening of preparing me to come to Nairobi to get on the TV show, that's when it dawned on me. Yeah, It's happening. My life is actually changing. Yeah. And the dreams that I had are going to happen. And the person that I saw myself being is actually going to manifest. And I'm there, I'm like, what? But it didn't dawn, dawn like the day that I was going to the airport to get on a plane to come to Nairobi. To get on the tv show that's when it dawned on me this is actually happening wow because i'm like someone who actually facilitates for you to come this is no joke mm-hmm. this thing is happening and plus i'm sure they had started making some noise yes about the, yes the show and yes and so there was proof that if there's something it, it's legit yeah, yeah there's no shady shady business <laughs> <laughs> there's a friend of mine who once found herself in a nigerian airport and I've killed me to a car's kumbe it was calm. Oh my god. Yeah. Anyway, just just <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that story someday, maybe. <laughs> just looking at how those things played out. Mm. You not having school fees and then even you going for the audition. Yep. And then you not having school fees, just finishing barely finishing that semester yeah. and being able to have Mr. Mumia yeah. and the accountant come through for you and lacking school fees for the next semester. Do you then believe that there are things in the universe that happened for you not uh, and not at you because if you had been at school mm. you'd be like but Nico should learn. yeah yeah and yeah it, it, it actually made me I, I totally believe that happened because it actually now taught me to believe in the fact that it's a sequence of things that are happening to align for something, something there's yeah. something that is actually being you know, being prepped for this. Mm. And it has happened to me not once, not twice. Things just always turn out to be, I'm like, why did that actually happen? Mm. Then I'm, those people were shady or yeah. those people were corn people. That's yeah. why that uh, deal that you wanted to have with them didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Or I hear someone say an experience of how they had a deal go wrong with them. I'm like, whoa, I was saved <laughs> I from was that. Saved. Exactly. And you know, but at that moment, I'm like, wow. Why didn't this happen? I wanted this so bad. This is what I needed at that time. Yeah. But then, because, yeah, I, I did ask. <laughs> I asked a lot of questions. I used to have so many alone times of, yeah, alone times of of just being like. You're bashing yourself. Yes. What is happening? What is, wh- why me? Yeah. I'm like, why, <laughs> why would all these things just be happening to me can't i just get a break Mm -hmm. i can't i just why why can't i people are getting breaks out here why can't i just get that relief for Mm. me but yeah if i was actually in school i would have probably not gone for the audition yeah yeah because looking at even how passionate you are about school and how you you talked about being at home more at school than at home yeah okay (laughs) <laughs> well, that's a tongue twister right? <laughs> then you would have been but this is my family i'm more at home yeah here, so this show is not necessarily what something i want to do exactly and it just shows how things make sense in retrospect like if you look back you're like by the way he because of happened your e happened i'm gonna jump okay the byob experience because mm. we saw it on tv <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to, re- to have like the repetition yes let's go back to the first day yeah the competition is done you've done i know the award thing that was aired yeah. was done after you guys had already been the show was over already it was more for show for pr but you guys had yeah. already yeah. finished the whole thing mm. let's go back to the day the first day in uh, there's no more BYOB, <laughs> no more interviews no nothing you've won what is running in your mind at that time <laughs> <sighs> At that time, I was like, okay, now this is the reality. I, you know, I was in a reality TV show, yeah. <laughs> but really, that was, this is the reality now. After everything is all done, 
after everything has been the lights have gone the cameras are gone now you're now back to reality yeah. so what next mm-hmm. what next I, it it had to i had to have had a plan for what next mm-hmm. but here's the thing i actually took some days to just weeks let's be honest i took some weeks of being i'm just there yeah <laughs> i'm there I mean, the account has money. <laughs> the bills are paid. I'm just there. Yeah. Let me. I took a moment and I took a time of just. Let me be there. Let me just be not. Let me be non-existent. Let me live in this nothingness for me. Yeah. yeah. Just take a moment of having that nothing box in your head mm. of just sitting back and not even reminiscing. Just nothing there's nothing i don't have to think because the whole process was about thinking mm-hmm. i don't have to think about anything i don't have to do anything just lazy around sit and do nothing and, and it was actually more strenuous than people think it was it was you it ha- you 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 in this space where you're building relationships mm. that are actually gonna end very soon because <laughs> all of you want the same thing yes so you come to realize that people will choose themselves and they're on at the end of the day. <laughs> it's human. Yeah. So once you've taken this time off, how do you make that first step and say, okay, I'm not going to be a statistics to quote your word yeah. and squander whatever it is I've built. I'm not even talking about the money. Mm. talking about now the name. Because mm. when people see you now, they yes. recognize you. Yes. There's an expectation that is tied to you mm. and the brand. And for some weird reasons, people will still attach you to the show. True. So how do you navigate <laughs> that space? So here here's an amazing thing that happened to me like immediately after when I'm in that process of you know what I don't want anything I don't want to reach out to anyone I just I just want a moment for myself. Then something turns out people actually see and say and reach out to me as a mentor. Like there's a t- there's a there's a crown that that I actually got a heart, let me call it a heart. Mm-hmm. There's a heart that I got out of it. I never I never saw myself as that and I felt oh now people want you to mentor to them. mentor them ah, okay okay and not only individual people reaching out to me uh, institutions organizations people just reaching out to me can you come talk to our girls can you come talk to our youths mm. can you mentor our young people we have a mentorship program would you like to be part of it as a mentor yeah. I'm like what I never saw myself as that <laughs> I'm like what Okay, so somebody actually saw that the whole process or everything that I actually been through is worth um is worth me trying is worth me sharing something into their lives. Mm. And that's how the other heart now came in and yeah. I was like, okay, I feel I feel this is an opportunity that I should actually take because it now drives me from just being that 19 year old fashion designer that people saw on TV and so went through the whole process perceived a timid young girl it grows me out of it yeah because that's not valentine you have to step up yeah you have to step up now. and that's that's not valentine and people did not know that <laughs> mm. people did not know that i had i had had leadership capacities from a young age moving all through the academic institutions i had i got leadership capacities that proved yeah. that would actually be able to prove that i'm not just a timid girl that someone saw on screen mm. there's so much more that amounted to me and i felt at some point it was at a disadvantage how the whole show portrayed me yeah. it portrayed me as a timid as a timid girl which i'm not <laughs> <laughs> i think uh, i was watching cta the one by esther yeah and when he was interviewing the drama queen she was like as long as it has the name reality at the front of that show it's being doctored in such a way the people that i meet are being yeah. portrayed in a certain character yes and you end up having this false um belief mm. of someone yes because of what they've been portrayed at very true as sorry as so, yeah so now from mentorship to now the business let's yes. talk about the business yes um what are you doing now so 
let's start where I started. Okay. <laughs> so, of course, now being I dis- so being on the TV show, then meeting all the different uh big businesses, being able to solve the different business problems that we were solving in the whole process. Yeah. It hits you that what you've actually been doing wasn't running a business. <laughs> you, you've just been running your own show. Yeah. You haven't been doing a business. Now you need to do it the proper way and what's the proper way, you know. Now that's when it hits me. There's some legalities that will just you need to make sure they are in order that separates you from everybody else. Mm. What's going to make you stand out? And in the whole process, what's going to make my business stand out from everybody else's business? Yeah. Am I just going to be just part of statistics? <laughs> that one fashion designer that does every what everybody does. Yeah. So I had to identify a niche. I did not know all these things. <laughs> you need to identify there's a niche, you know, what problem am I solving in the fashion industry? Because mm-hmm. how else am I going to stand out from everybody else? Yeah. And mentorship came in for me. Having mentors that were guiding me throughout, mm-hmm. people who had been in the industry and still are, yeah. just enabling me to identify that. What need would I like to cater for? And I realized I wanted to cater for plus-size women. Mm-hmm. So that w- I felt that would make me stand out and it would solve you know, that urging and that yearning that I had of what's going to separate me from the rest. So you have your legalities, right? I got my business registered. I have a business certificate. You know, now you're different. You're not just running a shady uh, (laughs) one-time business. It's something that you're thinking about. You know, like me being able to now realize that there are reasons as to why someone starts a business. Mm. You know, probably I'm starting it so that I can earn money to Mm. live well. Or I'm starting it so that I can leave it for my children. Mm-hmm. You know, as in just being able to identify what's your need. Am I starting it to solve a world problem? Yeah. Why are you starting? Why am I starting this business? And then I realized for me, it was I need to solve a problem. Mm-hmm. And the problem I realized, the plus is women is a market that has been untapped. And so I got onto that. Was that the only reason? Solving the problem. No, no. you narrowing down to plus size women. What was the attachment to it? It, it ran, ran. For me, it, it's, it was more personal. <laughs> Can you share it became that? more personal than that. So I, I come from a family that is of plus size women. Okay. And there was a time in my life that I was plus size. Plus size. Okay. Not, pl- pl- I was not eating right. Let's just say. <laughs> okay. I was not eating right. Cause, and I usually say this, plus size varies. Plus size doesn't necessarily mean that this lady is voluptuous all the way mm-hmm. it, it, it comes with different it i can be plus size my arms might just not be the standard arm that is being fitted on the outfit or it might be my bust is not the standard you know the way people put there's a standard bust size that someone needs to have yeah. but my bust is not the standard bust so that makes me plus size or it's just it generally varies from your body and the different parts that you have and i saw because so there were so many women in my family that i could see with all these challenges being able to just find a pro an appropriate outfit that made you feel i am i like feel comfortable and i feel i look good yeah. yeah so just being able to realize that this is actually a problem and why not try and cater for these women? Most most businesses, I believe now, emerge from a need to address a challenge that you yourself is experiencing yeah. or the people around you. Yes. So when you are able to attach that um, essence mm. in your business, mm. it's easier to navigate. The yes. problem with that also is you get into it with emotions. It's very true. So if it doesn't <laughs> work, you're like, oh, why? Yeah, why? why? Yeah. Did, did you have such emotions? I did. <laughs> I did. I did. Because for me, it turned out in the essence of when I say that I cater for plus size women, somebody asks me. But you're not. But you're not. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that doesn't mean that I don't have a story that is pushing me towards it. Yeah. Or even the fact that, you know, I would be more comfortable with when I feel, let's look at it at this basis. If I am disabled and uh, I walk into an office with a disabled, where it's a disabled person attending to me. Mm. How comfortable do I feel? Very. Mm. I'm like, this person might understand, understand or yeah. share, might actually share the same challenge that I'm going through to a point that I will be attended to in a way that I feel I should be attended to. Yeah. So getting that perception of, 
that lady is not even plus size. What's she talking about? How will she be able to understand? She's taking advantage. <laughs> the way people say, "Oh, Zungu na Zungu." Exactly. They are rich back home. Why are they doing That's it. Why? Well? Why? So you are not plus size. Why are you why getting you? into this space? Yes. Yeah. You won't even understand my needs. You won't even understand what I'm looking for, mm. and. So you can't cater for me. So I'm not even going to come in the first place. Yeah. You, um, we're not even going to do this business in the first place. <laughs> we have a TV show. So <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So there was all that, and and it was, and to some point, it it did put me down because I'm like, I'm. Then tell me, yeah. you you if you feel that I don't understand what your need is, tell me, share with me what you what you feel that I will not understand because yeah. I will hear. Mm-hmm. I will hear you and I will understand you now after hearing you because now you would have shared with me you've just made an assumption that I won't understand you mm. but you haven't shared with me what that thing that you feel that I won't understand until I got to a point where I did, I started having sit down sit downs with some of these ladies to share with me so I ask I usually ask yeah. I usually ask so we're going to do this with your outfit do you have something that you're uncomfortable about it where I feel like this part of your body is it's amazing you should you shouldn't hide it yeah. let's find a way to to, to make pronounce you f- it. pronounce it or flaunt it or make you feel appreciate it more yeah. so are you comfortable with us doing this process mm. yeah i uh, what you mean this part is nice yeah actually <laughs> let's do that yeah. so being able to just have that conversation with some of these ladies you know now makes them and here's the thing one lady will always you'll always find there's another person in their group mm. so this are uh, one lady now shares with their friend there's a lady you should talk to she's so amazing mm. she helps you just figure out exactly what That's you need yeah. yeah and then so it started so it started getting more encouraging when that one person just decided to give me a chance yeah mm. so now my question was what are you doing now like how was that transition oh yeah talking about all this yes how has that formed what, what is it that you're doing and how has the transition and what you've gone through informed what you're doing now okay so <laughs> so i basically opened the business yeah i opened a location and decided since one person has given me a chance let's roll with it let's make them 10 exactly. yeah. you know let's let's push it forward and decided i'm going i'm going ahead with this and decided to do fashion Okay. And I got onto it, did a couple of shows, and then I got to a point I'm like I feel it it limited me, it not limited me, it held me back from who I really was. I am not a sit by the sit by the office person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I realize that's not me. I I'm not let's let me sit at the office and uh, wait for clients or let me sit here and then that's not my nature <laughs> so you're an out and about I'm person. A, exactly yeah. i'm an i'm an out there person and i feel at some point i i'm i would have gotten depressed if i kept if i kept doing that yeah so i decided this is we're not going to continue doing it like this so you close bro- shop. So I broke it down. <laughs> okay. So I, I still get, I still do fashion. Yeah. But in a, in a, how do I put it? In an outsourcing need basis. Ah. So I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not at running. I'm running a shop. I'm running an office. I'm mm. seated somewhere where you know we're doing this. No, yeah. I'm not doing it like that. I'm doing it in a way that it enables me. To be able to do something else it yeah. it frees me to do something else that i i can actually do i did do a couple of lines of fashion lines mm. i did do a couple of pieces they they kept doing well and yeah. i just figured uh, am i really f- am i really happy <laughs> this is not me i'm not i'm not really i'm not really finding the joy that i thought i would seek from the whole process i enjoy designing for people when someone reaches out to me i do it yeah. But we are not. I'm not. not I wouldn't say that business. I'm grounded to it okay. like that much. Not grounded. Like I'm fixated. Mm-hmm. No, it's not your core business. No. What is the core business right now? Or you're still <laughs> figuring it out. I'm still figuring yeah. it out. <laughs> Trying a lot of things up yeah. and about. Yeah. Yeah. I think for creative people, we end up being uh, polymaths. You do a couple of things yes. and see what works. Yes. What 
And then also I think being propelled into the limelight. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the expectations and everything. Yes. People sort of put you in a box. Exactly. That is you, you what we be, need <laughs> from you. That's you what you should be, be doing. About this thing. Exactly. Yeah. So, from the stories <laughs> we've had, yeah, uh, we, you talked about being raised by a single mom, mm. and uh, just the need that you needed for someone to give you an ear. Yeah. How I'm gonna combine two questions. Okay. How does that impact your perspective on family because our channel is entrepreneurship and lifestyle we try yeah. and balance the two and then the other question would be um how does also that affect you in terms of your mental health or how did it affect you mm. and how did you come back from it and say okay i've gone through this because i also remember uh, in 20 or two i went through something mm. that i struggled with uh, my mom passed mm. in some very weird manner. Mm. But as late as 2015, 2016, I would, like, when that day came, mm. I would still have those, yeah. uh, like, I, it would play in my head and I would still see everything vividly because I'm the one who found her. Mm. So, I understand wh- when you talk about the need to have people talk to you and mm. ask you if you're okay. Yeah. So, merging the two family and mental health how does that play out for you so how does the whole situation play yeah, out in being the raised by a single mom losing her yeah. obviously going through moving around <laughs> is, uh, from an african setting i'm yet to meet anyone who has never lived with relatives <laughs> Especially out of the road yeah and then now you're just living with a stranger yeah. or a relative but now that is your guider, mm. your what are you called your, your guardian. Mm. But you still have to make it work. But it impacts, I think, your perception on family, yeah. and also just your general um, mental state. Mm. And then also now, having gone through that, okay, I feel like I'm layering this question <laughs> so many times. Yeah. But I think what I'm asking is, from that experience that you've gone through. Mm and the need that you had at that time yes how is it playing into your life right now when it comes to family and just the mental health space mm. hmm. what can i say so the whole experience that i had i can say i think i've, I've already said this though um you get to a point that you realize when you get to a point that you realize Everything that happens or everything that is happening, there's actually a cause. There's a cause and effect yeah. for everything that happens. So here's the thing: if my mom, so I, I, I got to a point where I was, why did she have to, uh, why did she have to die yeah. at that time, really, and leave me all by myself, or, and get me to all these transitions? Why did it all have to, have to happen? But then there are certain things that happen in your life that you're like, if that didn't, if that could not have happened, then all this could not have happened. Yeah, I wouldn't. Would yeah, I would probably. I'm certain I would have been on another path, or <laughs> I would have been on another journey. But it was all designed to happen like that for me to be where I am today, yeah. for me to even be able to. I usually feel to be able to resonate with somebody who I feel might actually have gone through all of that they actually feel when they hear my story they are like so i'm not all alone Mm. so i'm not going through it uh by myself and then it just ship it it shapes and shifts your mind in a way that you don't think the way you would have thought on a normal occasion so you just you know you get to a point where it's all these things were just to shape you for something bigger. When you when you get to a point and you, you you are a person who believes that everything is designed in a way, everything that happens to you is designed in a way to purpose you to for something bigger and greater than yourself, you start to think different. Yeah. It's not all for, you know, we ask why me, me, me. It's when you get to a point, it's not, it wasn't, it wasn't happening for me. Yeah. Or to me, it was happening for somebody else. Yeah. It was happening for 
someone else out there who will hear my story and say if all those things happen to her and she's where she is today or she's she's she thinks the way she's thinking then i can also do it i can also do it yeah. i can also you know i can also pick myself back up and get out there yeah. like i usually i usually share this with my family and friends that have you ever asked yourself the question that you know when you are that moment where you are down you are not even down in life when you're just going through things and then you ask yourself might i just be an example for somebody is my life an example mm. like the things that you are going through are you going to be one of those people mm. that people said do not do that because nani did that <laughs> and yeah. she turned out like that yeah yeah so this this that time that i get to that or are you going to be those people that that happened to you and then something amazing you picked yourself from it and something amazing happened to you yeah. to a point that somebody said if nani managed to get out of it you or too, went yeah. through this then even for me it's possible so you start to think for a larger purpose you start to think for a, it's a, for a bigger cause mm. than yourself when you start yeah. to think like that everything just shifts and it becomes different and i i believe i got to that point when i started finally being able to share mm-hmm. when i started to have friends that i could actually tell and cry to that this has been troubling me for years i've been carrying this for so long but this is it you know just this person not even telling me anything just you know just, just rub, uh, listening and rubbing my shoulder and just letting me cry just yeah, yeah. you want to cry cry just cry it out just being able to share it out yeah it gave me a release or a relief that has shifted my mind to a point that i'm it's not somebody else telling me these things it's in my spirit i'm being told it wasn't for you mm. it was for somebody else all these things were happening for a bigger purpose you know you, your life is for somebody else mm. it's not everything that happens in your life is not for you true so getting to that mindset it help it has helped me be in a position whereby i'm i'm believing that everything that happens and i will share with my family and i'm like all these things guys we need to think differently it's not for you it's for a bigger purpose then ah your mind shifts yeah. you don't become the same person that you are mm. and then of course if you start to think differently and you, your mind has shifted then you know you start to get into a better mental state yeah yeah, yeah. i think the, the biggest issue with mental health is the lack of avenues to share what yes. you're going through yes yes and constantly feeling like you're the one who's having it the worst. Exactly. We had an interview yesterday and uh, the person we were interviewing was like, you know, for men, it's easier to go out, have fun, drink, go home. <laughs> But then you realize that when you talk about your experience, you're like, hey, mimi niliachwa, ama mimi business yangu imeanguka, mimi nakwambia wewe hujui yangu. Mimi nilirudi kwa nyumba iko empty. Like I was saying, the sharing just makes the burden um easy yes, uh, yeah. the load to become easier to carry yeah. and just knowing that things happen yes and it's how you look at them that shifts or even makes you the person that you become mm. anyway i want to say thank you for <laughs> making the time i saw you have a youtube channel yes talk to us about value value, value moments, moments yeah. <laughs> so value moments as well arose from a need basis uh just being able to get people reach out to me and ask me and it's real people yeah. <laughs> see la story what one what in the dm so people reaching out to oh. me and asking me business or life question financial questions that they felt i am in the capacity to answer and i felt you know what let me just create a general avenue where you can talk about i can talk this. about all these things so that you know you can come back later and check on it and find something that will actually feed into your need of its finances running a business just in general being a better person mm-hmm. and that's how value moments came in just yeah. to create that value we're going to put that link yes. in the description of this channel <laughs> so idea to grow yes uh your social media account uh you can find me on ig at valentine nekesa you can find me on facebook at valentine nekesa uh on linkedin at valentine nekesa
Yeah. Yes. If you were to say one thing mm. to that girl that was being moved around to families and relatives mm. to try to find her footing and tell her, like a letter back to yeah. the younger you, what would that one line be in that letter that you would make sure he line lazim equipa i baru i will tell her don't beat yourself up it's not your fault okay mm. thank you guys for watching and listening if you're listening this to the uh, through our podcast gums of africa if you're watching this on youtube thank you very much and sure to like share and subscribe go follow valentine kaisa on yes. ig Her YouTube channel Valley Moments is in the description. Make sure to go and subscribe. I checked it out. It's amazing stuff. For the pesa. Yeah, you party a pesa. Be sure that I'm an ardent subscriber. I'm going to support you whenever I can. Mm. When you have new products, new projects, new yes. companies that you're starting, we're going to be very honored to have you again. Yes. And maybe this is a this is a pitch. Maybe once in a while we should do like live IG Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just talk and see whoever comes on board what kind of maswali on the end up. So make sure you also follow us on IG yes. at the Kenyan Entrepreneur so that when you start those live moments if I told I got to happen, I just prepare a little excitement yeah, go for event to minute work and then but I, I'm sure yeah, going to we're going to make <laughs> going to make it happen. So thank you very much for watching. Uh yeah, that has been our time. My name is Sebastian. Like, share, subscribe. Peace out and bye.